I'm Allison Singer with the Autism Science Foundation here today at the International Meeting for Autism Research and we're joined by Dr. Jonathan Green. He is from the University of Manchester and the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital in the United Kingdom. Dr. Green has a new paper that he presented today at IMFAR looking at a trial of early intervention for social communications in children with autism. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Can you tell me a little bit about the study that you're presenting today? What we've uh, just published today and what I'll be presenting in IMFAR is the largest treatment trial that's been undertaken into social communication uh, treatment for autism internationally to date. So just from the point of view of a treatment trial uh, and its size, that's a major milestone. Uh, so the number of children that we've enrolled into this trial, um, over 150, is at least double anything else that's been done previously. And in the treatment trial world that we work in, size is important. You know, the bigger your trial, the more accurate your results are likely to be. And you, can you describe the treatment intervention for us? Yeah, so this is a, uh, one of a group of um, uh, communication interventions that uh, have been developed internationally over uh, uh, the last decade, I would say. Um, ours is similar but different to some of the other interventions. They all have as their aim to improve the communication skills of young children with autism. Uh, what uh, we are particularly doing in our intervention is we're using our knowledge of normal development in neurotypical uh, children, and the way they develop communication and language, and we're seeing if we can apply this to the situation of autism. As we know, children with autism have difficulties in uh, communication in a number of ways. Uh, and what we think happens is that these difficulties in communication have an impact on their interaction with people who they respond to uh, most frequently, that is parents. So 80% of children's communication preschool is with parents. It's not with uh, nursery teachers or anyone else. It's with parents. So um, we, are, we think that the uh, atypicalities, the difficulties that these children have in communication affect their interaction. And this may mean there's a reduction in their uh, opportunities for learning social skills and social communication. So the aim of our intervention is to work with parents to help them get sensitized to the, the particular way that autistic children communicate so that they can respond to that communication sensitively uh, in a way that regular parents do with regular kids. And it's not to say that child, uh, parents of children with autism are insensitive parents, it's not that at all. It's just that the difficulty with the communication in autism is a real challenge for anyone communicating and with parents. So we, we are inviting them to be super parents with us, to really train up their skills of appreciating the subtle communication problems with autism. And what we hope is that by doing that, um, the kids themselves will respond to that kind of s what we call synchronous response from the parent by increased language and communication itself. So it's a it's approach that's um, very much based on our knowledge of, of early development of language and communication, how it happens naturally. Um, what it's rather different from is approaches that take a, an approach of saying we have to teach language to these children in a very particular way, or we have to use very behaviorally orientated interventions to um, mold their language in a very particular way. What we're trying to help autistic kids do in our treatment is to develop language in a more normal kind of setting, if you like, a more naturalistic setting. Uh, and that's the aim of, of, of the intervention strategy that we use. Is it similar in nature? Is the intervention similar in nature to uh, pivotal response or relationship development intervention or LOVAS ABA? Is there a, yeah. an analogy to be made? So it's probably, it's probably um, most similar to the pivotal response and the RDI. It's, it's uh, not really similar to uh, ABA. It's a, it's a different kind of approach to that. Um, as I say, because it doesn't work really on, on behavioral principles that the ABA tends to do. And so what were the results of your trial? Okay, so uh, what we looked at in our trial, uh, which was a randomized trial uh, with a number of different uh, outcomes, was firstly we looked at whether the parents responded to the intervention. So the intervention was with the parents, um, uh, and uh, I could describe the intervention in a bit more detail a bit later, but it, basically interventions with the parents to improve their 
understanding of the kid's communication. So firstly, we want to measure uh, how well they were able to benefit from that and improve their response. Then we measured how well the, the children, their children, responded to the parents as a result of that. And then we wanted to see whether uh, we could look at how the children were functioning outside that interaction with the parent in different settings, in school, in, in our clinics, etc., to see whether if we'd made any difference with the parent and child, whether that would generalize out into the, into the wider community, if you like. And uh, our results were that uh, we found a very strong treatment effect on the parent responsiveness. So um, uh, this was actually a massive effect in terms of uh, the significance of what we did. Uh, so we, we trained up these parents really well to do this. They responded extremely well. One of the characteristics of the trial is that we had parents of all kinds. So this is a really broad spread, representative spread of, of families with autism throughout the UK. Three sites in London, Manchester, Newcastle. So a lot of different kinds of families from all social classes, demographics, etc. And uh, we managed to train a huge percentage of them up really well. So that's a good, uh, a good finding, good optimistic finding from the trial. Then we were able to show that the children responded to that. So their communication within the relationship, the interaction with the parent improved markedly. So there's a significant difference between the kids in the trial arm and the kids who are just having regular treatment. Um, and then we looked at uh, whether the kids would, were any different out of the community. And here, although we found an improvement in the, uh, the treated arm, there was also an improvement in the other arm and the relative difference uh, wasn't significant. So we didn't find a significant treatment effect in the community measures that we did. Um, in terms of the parents' report of how they felt about the treatment and about their the child's progress, this was uh, very positive. So the parent report of language, language development during the course of the trial, uh, suggested that in our um, packed arm, the treatment arm, uh, the children had done uh, significantly, hugely better than the, the kids who are having regular treatment uh, from the parents' perception of it. And they gave us a lot of anecdotal accounts of the changes they felt they'd, they'd seen in the relationship with the child. So a lot of positive things there. So the overall results of the trial are kind of mixed in that sense. So we were able to change the, what we call the proximal targets of the treatment in this, the dyad, uh, but we weren't able to show generalization out into the community, and that's a tough one.